Thanks for joining today. Our topic is Seeing is Believing, Using Visual Aids for Easier Understanding of Quantum Physics. My name is Samantha Benelli, and I'm the Physical Science Category Specialist here at Wards. So without further ado, we have some objectives today. First one is to use our Sanko quantum dots experiment to visualize and test particle in a box and quantum mechanics concepts for easier understanding. We're going to be using a spectrometer to study the behavior of quantum nanobeads. We're going to be demonstrating both high school and college concepts. So the product that I'm going to be speaking to today can cover high school and college. I probably wouldn't go down to middle school with this just because it is quantum mechanics and nanotechnology, but hey, if your classes are doing nanotech in middle school, then more power to you. So without further ado, I'll be talking a little bit about how quantum dots work. So I have a setup right here. Each vial contains a solution of the same concentration, same exact material, same parts per million. Now, you're going to notice when I illuminate the quantum dot solutions with an LED, this one's about 405 nanometers. It radiates purple light. Um, blue light also works. So if you have um, a black light or anything like that, this would also work without having to purchase a separate light emitting diode. Now, if you notice, the vials are fluorescing four distinct beautiful colors. This is because the size of the quantum dot or nanobead in the solution is four different diameters. So you may be wondering, seems kind of like a weird subject, what concepts does this teach? What can you really get out of this? There's actually amazing how much this can teach. You can teach nanotechnology, particle wave duality, discrete energy, absorption, emission, infinite square well that's getting more advanced, more towards college, spectroscopy techniques, semiconductors, particle behavior in a closed sphere, as well as spherical harmonics. For those of you who aren't in physics or technology, I've seen these used in biology as well. What they're doing is they're attaching quantum dots to proteins to track them. So these have many different applications as well as they're coming up in TVs now. So if you buy a really nice TV, it's possible that there might be some quantum dots on the screen. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Okay, now I'm gonna go over some high school level learning concepts. We're gonna use the Sanko quantum dots as a visual aid to accompany your lessons in particle wave duality, quantization of energy, and the Bohr model of the atom. So first I would like you to introduce the formula for particle wave duality, and I've included that in the PowerPoint presentation. Then we're going to shine our LEDs under each vial to demonstrate the quantum nanobeads in action. So just show them the lovely beads as we've been doing the entire time, give them a little visual to get excited about. After illuminating each vial, have your class brainstorm about the size of the nanobeads. So why does the red one fluoresce a red color? What does that have anything to do with why the blue fluoresces the blue color? So have them kind of brainstorm and figure out what the size of the nanobeads suspended in the solution has anything to do with the colors. So after they brainstorm, ask a student to write the colors on the board in order from smallest to largest quantum dots. Next slide, please. So without further ado, I'm going to dive into the high school level data and calculations. So based on the colors that are observed on the quantum dots, you want to ask your students to calculate the radius of the quantum dots for each color using the equation that I've provided on the PowerPoint. And you'll want to provide the students with the colors of the visible light spectrum that I've also provided in the PowerPoint. So after they run through the calculations, they're going to plot the quantum dot radius versus the emitted wavelength. And then you'll want to ask them when they're done, what relationship do you see? So if you can see on my PowerPoint, I've plotted an example for you and it has a nice linear relationship. 
And you'll want to ask them also what happens if the radius of the quantum dots gets very large or approaches infinity. And that's where the inquiry based comes in. So this also touches a couple of NGSS common core standards that are inquiry based. So a lot of this experiment is given right to you and it's basic science, but a lot of it requires students to brainstorm as well and come up with their own conclusions. And of course, if they get it wrong first, then they can test their hypotheses again and prove themselves correct the second time. I'm going to dive into college level now. So our first experiment, I'm going to run through several experiments for college level because these for high school, you kind of just show them how to do it. You don't really use it as um, a quantitative. It's more of a qualitative. So in high school, you'll be showing the dots, explaining those relationships, how they pertain to the different topics that you talk about in high school. So it's kind of a visual aid as an introduction. College level, we're going to be using the spectrometer to kind of turn it into a quantitative experiment. So we're actually going to be measuring some values. So experiment number one, theory and derivation of formulas, an introduction into the time independent Schrodinger equation, which was not my best friend in college, but it's funny because I love it now. It's funny how that works. So within the context of particle wave duality, the Schrodinger equation defines the relationship between the wave-like characteristic of a particle or its wave function and its energy. So I've put that relationship in the form of an equation on your slideshow on the screen right now. So for a simple one-dimensional system, we'll start a little bit simpler, such as the one-dimension particle in a box. The Hamiltonian operator is defined as the sum of kinetic and potential energies, which can be rewritten in the format below. Again, I've provided the equation for you on the PowerPoint where H is the reduced Planck's constant pictured below, M is the mass of the particle, and V of X is the potential as a function of location. For a particle with a one-dimensional wave function, the complete time-independent Schrodinger equation is therefore written in the PowerPoint. Now that the students understand the theory and derivations behind Schrodinger's equations, we're going to dive into our first problem, solving the particle in a box. Using Schrodinger's equation that I just discussed, we're going to find the wave function and energy levels for a particle trapped inside a one-dimensional box. So this is going to require a little bit of imagination on the student's part. So we're going to picture a particle trapped in a one-dimensional box where the potential inside of the box is zero, but outside of the box, it's infinite. So I have a little bit of a diagram and the limits set to that box. The particle is completely free inside, but at the two boundaries, the infinite potential keeps it from leaving the potential well. So in other words, the probability of the particle being outside of the box ever is zero. So since the potential inside of the well is zero, which means V of X is also zero, we can simplify the Schrodinger equation to the following form. And I've put that on the PowerPoint slide for a visual. Anytime I hear that Schrodinger's equation can be simplified, it's music to my ears because I remember having the original Schrodinger and I actually have it in, um, in this packet that we provide with the lab and it's so many pages long so the fact that we can simplify that is phenomenal so we can rewrite it a couple times when the students kind of simplify their math since the energy of the system can't be negative we can define a new variable so again that's on your PowerPoint to look at and the complete Schrodinger equation can be simplified even further again best day ever so after the class applies the boundary conditions imposed by the infinite potential well, they'll find the final wave function and energy levels. So lessons learned throughout this experiment, there's quite a bit of them actually, pretty high level. Energy quantization, zero point energy, and spatial nodes were covered in that topic. 